you guys. So hey, my name is Andres. We've got Craig here, Baking Steel Test Kitchen. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Um, always giving out good stuff, good education on pizza or food in general or life. And we're always positive. Um, that's really important to us. So you guys at Rock, we could not do this without you. So thank you. This is probably like our 60th um, Zoom class. We're doing it every week since the COVID hit, since we can't do our live classes. So thank you. And we're going to get right into it. We're going to take you through the steps of making pizza at home. We're going to take under the assumption that you have the dough ready and fermented. If you don't have the dough, then you purchased it today. Um, and we're going to walk you through our steps of making your dough balls and then making pizza. Um, first things first, I fire up the ovens at 475 to 500 degrees. I've got baking steels on my top rack and on my bottom rack. If I don't own a baking steel, consult with us. You need to have one. But if you, um, if you have a pizza stone, put it on the top rack um, and we'll... Once that thing breaks, hopefully you'll come in and join a, the Team Steel, and we'll talk uh, further about that. But for now, preheat it one hour. At the same time, the dough comes out of the fridge uh, maybe an hour or two before we fire it up. Um, if you're balling it up, which we, what's what we're going to do now, this is a really critical step. Our latest Mastering the Pizza Dough recipe, we talk about bulk fermenting your dough for 12 hours at room temperature and then one, two, or three days in the refrigerator in the bulk state, covered, okay? Um, we want that flavor to build up over time and believe me, it makes a humongous difference in the flavor profile, bulk fermenting it, okay? So we bulk ferment it. <clears throat> then the day of making pizza, we make our dough balls. This is critical because now we want to take all those gluten strands and the natural gases and tie them all up into a ball. And those natural gases will be stuck inside this ball. As the dough gets to be room temperature and the dough relaxes, it starts to rise. And that's the gases trying to get out. And that's what creates the bubbles and the air pockets that we love in our pizza. Okay? So I'm going to show you how I make a dough ball. First things first, the dough is cold, um, which makes it a little less sticky, but flour up your hands, okay? And your, and your work surface right in front of you, okay? And now I'm going to pick the dough out. I've already portioned this out. This is 250 grams of dough. Uh, that's about the size to make a 12-inch pizza. Because the dough is cold and it's got a lot of water, we flour up both sides just to make it more manageable. And now what I'm going to do is just pick it up and then just fold it in half. Okay, and I turn my hand sideways. I grab each side and I press it in and close again. Just like that. And I turn. If it gets sticky at all, that's a time to take a time out, put more flour on your hands. I lightly press in and I close it and I turn. And I follow the same sequence 20 or 30 times. Now keep in mind, this is not a stress ball. Okay, we don't want to rip it and tear it. It's be gentle. Press in and watch how softly I'm pressing in. Maybe like a, a third of the way in. And I close it. Okay, and I turn. And I just keep following the same sequence. This seam side is always facing away from my chest. And I've got this smooth side. You can see how smooth this is, right? Almost like a baby's butt, okay? And, I just, and each time I do this, I'm getting a little bit more and more taut, taking some of the air out. It's getting tighter and tighter as I turn and press. Press and turn. When it's just about the ball where I want it to be, it's nice and tight, I take that smooth side and I put it into my palm, and now I can aggressively pinch it closed. And now I've trapped all of those gluten strands. You can see I've got this nice ball of dough. And now for the next, this dough ball needs to rest for the next, call it three to five hours, depending on the temperature. My temperature in this house is currently at about 72 degrees. 
Room temp is anywhere from, in my opinion, 68 to 72. If you're varying from that, you, we can adjust. But generally speaking, room temperature, this ball is going to rest covered at room temperature for three to four hours. And in that time, it's going to almost double in size. So you want to keep it covered too, right? So I'm going to put it back in my, actually, I probably wouldn't use a bowl. I use something flat like a sheet tray. Um, like this, put it on my sheet tray, and I would cover it with plastic wrap and let this rest. Again, for a few hours, and that's what we do on game day. All right, so now let's, we're gonna fast forward four hours. The dough has relaxed. I've actually put it into, I guess I could put it into a deli, make more sense, but I, I let my dough rest in the delis, okay? Um, for three or four hours, you can see it's starting to expand. When I first put it in here, um, it was about a half of this size. It's almost blowing the lid off, which means it's just about done, okay? That means it's room temperature, it's risen, and now I'm going to stretch out and make my pizza. And before I make my pizzas, I want to have my mise en place. Let's talk about mise en place. All that means is get your stuff together before we start cooking. In other words, I don't want to stretch my dough out and then go to my fridge and look for my sauce or my cheese or my ingredients. I want to do all that beforehand. So look, today we're going to make um, a cheese pizza. Now I've got all my cheese already ready to rock and roll. And today's pizza, we're going to do a white pizza. I have Parmesan Reggiano. We have fresh mozzarella. And I have some Fontina. And we're going to shred all this cheese up into one pizza. That's going to be my white pizza sauce. I'm not using Alfredo. I'm not using... Um, creams or anything like that, super heavy. We're going to use cheese as the base, and that's going to be our sauce. Let's get into making this. Then we'll get to some questions in a little bit. Don't forget, remember, I've got my, my oven on at 500 degrees at um, Fahrenheit for the last hour, so my oven is super hot, ready for this pizza to launch. I've got a pizza peel. Now let's talk about this for a second. There's wood and there's metal. We're using wood because wood launches better than metal. Doesn't get stick. It whisks up some of the moisture. I'm going to flour it up. I use a combination of flour and semolina flour. No cornmeal. Remember that because corn is corn. It burns. We don't like it. it tastes horrible on our pizza. We like corn on the pizza, not underneath it. So that's my um, floured peel. Think of those as ball bearings and set that aside. Let's get to the dough. Flour up in front of you. Remove the dough from the container. I've got a little oil here side down. And now I'm just gonna gently pick it up. Make sure it doesn't stick, okay? And I've got this nice circle because my, my dough container is a circle. Now my dough is a circle. Makes it much easier to stretch around pizza if that matters. And all I'm going to do is lightly press into this dough, and it feels like clouds. Actually, can you push that screen down just a little bit? Um, you can see I'm just kind of lightly pressing. You can see that's perfect. And it's not sticking. I pick up, I continuously pick it up, so it won't. And, um, and as I press, it's starting to expand a little bit. When it gets to be about six or seven inches, it's going to. Um, I just want to take my bracelet off here. I'm going to pick it up and use my knuckles. And we're going to do the gravity stretch. I'm just going to put my knuckles around this thing. And like a steering wheel, I'm just kind of going around. Each time I do that, I give it a little shake. And what's happening, you can see it's starting to expand. And if I work consistently around, it's going to become consistently the same thickness, right? You can see that. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And actually, you can take it. Right? And I'm stretching a little bit, turning. Be patient. Nothing to stress about here. And as it gets closer to my size, I can place it on the peel that I made. Right? Remember, we got that dusted up with flour and semolina flour. I place my dough on top. And before I do anything else, I'm going to give this thing a little slide. It should be moving like a hockey puck, like sliding back and forth. If it's not, and I'll pick up that area that's stuck and throw some more flour underneath it. Really that simple. And now what I'm going to do is 
give us one last stretch, place it back on my peel. And I like to do is take my edges and kind of stretch them a little bit and pinch them. And what I'm doing is I'm creating some contours in my dough, right? Maybe um, really taking those air, air bubbles and making them larger in some areas and smaller in other areas. I've got this really nice looking crust that makes each pizza that I make and each slice that we cut unique. It's not going to be perfectly round on the edges. I just think it's awesome. All right? Anyway, that's it. That's my dough. Give it one last final shake. I feel pretty confident it's not going to get stuck. So now I can start to add my ingredients. And which means I pull out the Wonder Shredders. I got two today. I got gifted one of these 1920 um, Wonder Shredders, which so thank you for that. <clears throat> um, for my base, I might want to add a little bit of olive oil. Do a nice little white pizza here. And now for my cheese, I'm going to add a little Parm Reggiano. It's kind of grated on there nice and light. You guys like cheese. I'm not sure how much you like cheese, but this is a fresh mozzarella. I'm just breaking this off into small pieces. Oh, man, it looks good, doesn't it, Chef? And I might want to take this pizza. Be mindful. It doesn't get, it's been sitting here for a couple of minutes. Give it a little shake again, right? Make sure it's not going to um, get stuck when I go into that oven. It looks great. And now I've got some fontina. And by the way, there's no rhyme or reason here. These are just cheeses that I had in my fridge. Um, basically, use what you might have in your fridge. Call it refrigerated cheese pizza. And now I'm just going to shred this fontina directly on top. And less is more, unless you're talking about cheese. And maybe more is more. What do you think, Chef? Breathe. Breathe. Take a deep breath. I'm almost going in the oven here. So I got to be chill, right? <clears throat> yoga. Yoga dough. We call this yoga dough, by the way, because it stretches so easy. Um, I'm going to come over here and switch my oven to broil. Give that a couple of minutes to um, heat up. What I'm going to do now is um, give it one last shake. And I mean that. This is this, like, make sure it's still, just, make sure it's still sliding. Now I'm confident I can go into the oven. The back of the peel goes to the back of the steel, and I slide it off. And that broil is going to be kicking on in just a minute, but I'm going I'm to launch it anyway because I feel like it. Ready, Chef? So back of the peel to the back of the steel, and just kind of shake it off. Boom. Awesome. Now what I'm going to do, because I got the broiler on, I want to put my timer on for two minutes. And that way, when we get into a conversation here, and I forget, my timer will remind me. I got, hey, dude, you got a pizza in the oven. Don't forget me, and don't burn. So two minutes in my oven, I know is a pretty good amount of time. It, it tends not to burn too quick. Um, what do you think, Chef? Pretty good so far? It smells amazing. Um, and then what we'll do is, I just want to grab one thing. I don't. I want to clean up in front of me and get ready. If I'm having a pizza party, I want to stretch and make another pizza out now. Um, since we're not having a pizza party today, I don't need to do that. But now is the time to do it. I would stretch it out, get it kind of prepped up. So when this one is removed, I can launch a new one in. Right? I've got my mise en place here already to do that. Um, but today we're only making one pizza because there's only two of us. And... We already had one before class, too, so just in case. Uh, anyway, let's take a um, peek. It's been about a minute in the oven, and then we'll get to some questions. Because I have the broiler on, can you guys see? Can you, yeah, you guys can see here, right? Look at that, huh? Look at those bubbles, Chef. Isn't that awesome? Beautiful. Now it's, it's cooking. It's got about probably another, I'm going to probably leave that broiler on for a minute because it didn't kick in right away. This pizza will be cooked in about three to three to 
probably three and a half minutes, which is extremely fast because we got our baking seal scorching hot, um, and we'll let it let it finish up, and we'll show you guys the finished goods. This is just a white pizza. Again, our ingredients were Parmigiano, fresh mozzarella, and it's the kind that's in the plastic wrap, and we kind of tear it by hand. And then we used Fontina, which we shred by ourselves. And remember, we always shred our own cheese because, um, I'm gonna turn, I just wanna check this one more time. Oh yeah, it's looking awesome. I'm gonna turn my broiler off. Right, let me see. The broiler's still, I'm gonna turn the broiler off in like one second. Remind me to turn that broiler off, Chef. Um, we always shred our own cheese because when we do, these strands, when we don't, I should say, these individual strands that you see in those plastic bags are coated with starch in the store. So we never buy it pre-shredded because it browns way too fast. We always shred our own cheese. And these shredders come in really handy. In fact, I'm going to turn the broiler off. Boom, boom. And finish this. Another minute, this pizza will be done, and we will have an incredible, what is this, a I think this is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. A six-day dough. First time ever. This dough we made, it was six days ago. It's going to be incredibly flavored. Here's one right here, too. The secret to it, so it doesn't overproof, is to ball it up the same day. Then you've got the best of both worlds. And this is kind of like the max end of pizza dough at home. Is like, you know, we find between days five, six, and seven, Robust flavor, but you got to um, be burning a little bit. No, um, just be mindful. We're almost done. Want to take a, take a peek? Can I see inside here? Ooh, probably a little dark, huh? It's awesome. Awesome. So let's, I'm actually going to um, yank it out because I kind of got a little aggressive. I left my broiler on a little bit too long, which is okay because. That awesome beautiful check it out underneath right awesomeness crisp I can't even pick it up it's so hot but I'm gonna try really quick <gasps> boom look I got it on my fingertips so it's not really burning me yet you can see that that was literally about three minutes and 20 seconds um, super crispy beautiful can you take a top down of that Is that awesome smells amazing you can you could you can use like a little bit of shaved garlic if you'd like you could top this with basil. Um, it's really gorgeous. Amazing. Uh, and anyway, that's our white pizza. Thank you, guys. <laughs>